uh, presentation. Can you see it? Yeah, I hope uh, people had already their lunch because this is uh, <laughs> looks very tasty. <laughs> okay. When you're ready, uh, you can start already. Okay. Yeah. Uh, well, good, good afternoon, uh, all of you. Uh, my name is uh, Arvid uh, Uchis. I'm the uh, manager of food service uh, with uh, with Marfo. Um, what I've done is uh, I made a, a presentation uh, in uh, Dutch, but I'll do everything in uh, in English. Um, first of all, I'd like to uh, introduce uh, Marfo uh, to all of you. Uh, basically, um, we are two uh, two companies. Um, one company is located in uh, America, uh, well, actually in Canada, uh, and the other one is uh, located in Lelystad. Lelystad is the producing uh, factory for all the um, military uh, meals, uh, multi-portion, single portions, and the individual uh, snacks. Uh, we started in 1971, and since uh, July 2019, we're part of Fleury Michel SA, a French uh, food production company. Um, prior to Corona, we produced about 200,000 uh, meals a day, uh, which is roughly on the moment uh, brought down to between 75,000 and 100,000. And we employ about 325 uh, people. Um, our sister company in, uh, in Canada, um, in Rigaud, uh, it's about a similar setup, also a similar amount of uh, output of uh, meals and a similar amount of uh, employees working. Well, what is important to know is that we are not a simple uh, frozen meal factory. Uh, we do much uh, more. Uh, we are um, really into um, supplying total solutions to our customers. So it's not only the, the hot meals, um, main meals you have seen um, and taste, taste it uh, during the session, which we supply to the military, but we also do um, uh, handheld snacks, um, total solutions, meaning more uh, pre-assembled uh, uh, boxes, uh, trays, all uh, frozen. Uh, we produce frozen salads, uh, desserts, and uh, breakfast uh, items. Well, the way we uh, produce uh, meals is based on uh, shock freezing. Uh, shock freezing is that once a meal is being cooked, uh, it will be assembled in its uh, final packaging, and then it goes through a gyro freezer, which has a constant temperature of minus 40 degrees Celsius. Uh, a meal takes about two hours to get through the carousel, and uh, once it's out of the carousel, it has a core temperature of minus 18 degrees Celsius. The thing is that we use this process is purely because it um, helps the quality of the product. Um, the comparison on here on this slide, you can see the, the, the top part is uh, the, the apple. Uh, if you would freeze an apple in your uh, normal um, freezer at home, um, once uh, the apple is frozen and you would slice it with uh, a knife, it, it has a feeling like uh, old uh, mature cheese. It breaks apart in uh, different uh, particles. If you do the same exercise uh, via our shock freezing, um, then uh, use a knife. Uh, you can slice very nice slices of uh, the apple uh, because the fact is that the molecules in the product are grouped on a, on a same similar size. Uh, which helps to uh, protect and, and, and maintain the quality of the product. So the fact that our meals um, have a shelf life of uh, 18 months and even can go up if required to uh, two years is purely due to the fact this uh, this freezing process. We don't add anything to it uh, to uh, increase um, the uh, best uh, before uh, of, of the product. Also, um, what is very good with the product as well, if you uh, use um, this uh, this process, what we do is that, for example, if we cook uh, a product, every vegetable, for example, which you use in a meal either needs to be blanched or does require heat treatment to uh, make it on a correct uh, microbiological level. And what we do is with this, uh, this liquid, for example, when we cook, we have um, uh, heat exchanges. Uh, so once we need to uh, cool down the product, uh, we let the, the liquid cooking liquid go through the heat exchanges uh, and bring it back uh, with, with the product. So uh, it also uh, keeps the uh, vitamins which may be lost, the, the cooking liquid where the vitamins are in may be lost, 
maintained by the product when we um, uh, finalize uh, uh, the uh, the assembly. So markets uh, we operate, our main market is uh, the airline, which is about approximately, well, prior to Corona, it was approximately 60% uh, of our turnover. Uh, next to that, we also produce all the meals for the Dutch prison system. Uh, as you know, we do it for the military. Uh, we uh, produce meals for high-speed trains internationally. Uh, we have uh, a part of our company who produces meals for uh, hotel and uh, restaurants. Uh, and we are a large player on the uh, hospital uh, market. Um, we do about um, 20 hospitals in the Netherlands and about 45 hospitals in Germany. And slowly on, because of uh, the impact of uh, Corona, uh, we are also looking at uh, moving into the retail uh, market. Okay, what is of course uh, very important is um, uh, sustainability uh, and also uh, regarding uh, the ingredients. Uh, what very important is to know about um, our uh, production is, for example, if take a simple sample of um, uh, green beans, uh, special bone, uh, who are being used um, in, in a lot of our meals, for example. Uh, what we do is that we buy the entire harvest and we select our, um, we select the farmer where we buy the harvest. Uh, based on the fact if he's using a lot of pesticide, for example, we want to reduce that one. Uh, so if we find a good quality product, uh, we buy the entire harvest, uh, all the crops, and uh, we separate it in two parts. Uh, one part is which is suitable, for example, in military meals, but also in the airline meals, uh, because as we say, they need to be crew proof, uh, because um, sometimes uh, people who are handling these meals, uh, and they keep them longer in the oven. Uh, so we want to maintain a, a good quality of the product once uh, it's heated. And the other part of uh, the harvest we will use for the hospital, uh, because in the hospital, of course, elderly people, uh, people who have difficulty with chewing, uh, they like to have, for example, a bean, uh, which is uh, easier to uh, digest. Um, what we also are looking at now, of course, uh, is the trend that we uh, look at replacing, uh, for example, um, uh, alternative, finding alternatives for uh, for meat. Uh, just going into the topic then of the military, uh, we have uh, done several interviews with uh, the military and a replacement um, a beef product uh, like uh, like uh, uh, like meat is not uh, much uh, appreciated. Uh, they rather have um, real uh, meat uh, to eat. Uh, but we do see the trend uh, within uh, hospitals that uh, vegan is, is very popular. So um, there we also are uh, looking at. Okay, what is very important as well is, uh, of course, food safety. Um, we are um, food safety uh, certified 22,000. Um, so what we do is uh, positive release. What does it mean? Um, the meals uh, are being produced, assembled, and then they go into quarantine for uh, at least 24 hours. Uh, we have our own laboratory, uh, which will uh, check uh, the, the meals on uh, with specific tests. Uh, so that they are according to uh, all the uh, regulations. If we see an increase in uh, any of the pathogens or uh, any like that, uh, we uh, still block the meal and then uh, send the meal for a, a third or second uh, check uh, to an external lab uh, to uh, to see if uh, if the meal is uh, is still within uh, standards. So food safety is uh, is a very important uh, uh, part of uh, of our process. Of course, what is very important as well is um, uh, packaging, uh, which is on the moment a hot item. Um, what you really see on the moment is that on, not only quality of the meals is important, but also the quantity. Uh, so more and more people, for, or more and more uh, clients, for example, in hospitals, but also in um, the airline are looking at uh, increasing uh, the uh, weight of, uh, of a dish. Uh, instead of having like an appetizer or a dessert, they really like to have a, a heavy meal, which will reach up to uh, 400, 450 grams. And of course, what is important there as well is that you really look at uh, the salt contents uh, uh, of, a, of a meal, for example. And that's also, of course, important for uh, the hospitals, but it's also important for what we do for the military, uh, because these uh, people are going on an exercises and uh, we really try to 
uh, keep uh, uh, salt on a certain level and also um, look at uh, the cohydrates if they are uh, correct because of the, the burning of energy. Next to this, of course, it's very important on the mode packaging. Um, for the airline, uh, the fact is that uh, in the airline industry, um, the meals have to, uh, the, the packaging of the meal, which has been in direct contact with the food, is either a landfill or uh, will be incinerated. Uh, that's an international uh, requirement, uh, but there more and more you see that they are looking at uh, using different types of material as well. If you look at the, the pictures on the right hand side, uh, that's for example bagasse, uh, which starts to be very popular uh, to have it like a seabed container. Um, or um, the, on the left hand side, it's uh, a packaging which we are planning to try with uh, the military. It's uh, partly carton on the outside and uh, with a, a seabed um, uh, layer. Uh, we also have a product uh, which is more like on uh, on the right hand side, uh, which is uh, compostable and uh, after uh, the uh, plus 100 days, uh, it will be um, yeah completely uh, taken uh, broken apart by uh, by nature, uh, and you could use it uh, for compost. So all these trends uh, we are working with, but what is very important as well is that. Um, it also needs to comply with the uh, operational environment. Uh, for example, if uh, you look at uh, with the military, uh, these meals are sometimes uh, being rough handled by the MSK operators. Um, they don't stack them nicely into the isolating uh, boxes. They will drop them uh, from the grid out of the oven directly into. Uh, so they will be uh, sometimes um, uh, firmly hit uh, by uh, stacking them. Uh, for example, what we do there is we have non-peelable um, uh, foils uh, to protect them even uh, better. Um, so for this uh, this handling, of course, uh, yeah, on the moment a um, a seabed based container is uh, the best to uh, withstand the uh, the rough handling uh, by um, by the military. Okay, Marvel has been involved in the Yamas K uh, project uh, from uh, the beginning. It, it started like an idea uh, until what it is now. Um, so first of all, uh, when we started the discussions with uh, the military, uh, we had uh, a, a few um, criteria which we had to uh, adhere to. Uh, of course, of course, the uh, food safety, which is the most important one. Uh, also to avoid uh, like uh, local uh, sabotage when uh, there are in military uh, territory that uh, um, it's difficult to um, uh, pollute uh, meals or um, um, yeah uh, sabotage it. Uh, of course, what is very important is the uh, the values of um, uh, the, the food insider, as they call it. Um, also, the fact that of course with uh, using a concept like this. Uh, you will reduce the operational cost, uh, less uh, staff required, less water and less energy. Um, we're also able to offer a wider variety of, uh, of menus. Um, so it's not only uh, every day uh, the same, we have uh, a lot of flexibility. Um, and it's uh, less uh, complex in, uh, in cooking. It's quite astonishing if you see um, how they are able of uh, producing 250 meals in about uh, less than uh, one hour out of this uh, kitchen. It, it works uh, quite uh, well. So we designed together with the French company uh, the, the kitchen. As you can see, there's a, a drawing. It started in 2013 uh, based on, uh, on a container. Um, and of course, uh, all the logistics and uh, the um, system to uh, heat uh, is based uh, on uh, our uh, concept uh, and it's quite easy to use this uh, rational uh, type of ovens uh, to um, heat either individual portions or uh, multi portions. And also it's easy to implement a, a four uh, weekly uh, cycle uh, menu. So once the comp uh, container was uh, completed, we did uh, first uh, several uh, pilots in 2003, 2004 and uh, 2005. Um, so abroad as well and uh, of course in, in Germany where you have the SOPSOM uh, at the end of, uh, of the year, every year, um, where we could uh, really test uh, the, um, uh, yeah, the, the working of the MSK. And it went live in uh, in Afghanistan, in Tarikot and uh, Deir Wood um, in 2006 and 2008. Uh, what we are doing on the moment is that uh, we are uh, um, 
changing uh, the current menu. The, the current menu they are using is uh, since uh, 2009, and um, we uh, did in 2019 during the SOPSOM a uh, interview with uh, military in, in the field to see uh, what changes they uh, would like. Uh, because this was uh, really never uh, done that we had the input of the, the people who had to uh, to eat our meals so based on that uh, we saw that uh, there's a, a preference for a, a type of, of kitchen which uh, especially uh, italian uh, greek uh, spanish and french which was uh, quite surprising uh, next to um, of course the highest scoring part is the asian type of uh, of meals uh, we also looked at uh, which, um, uh, pro uh, which uh, starch components and vegetable components um, they really uh, would like and uh, the type of um, uh, cooking what they really preferred. Uh, so based on this, uh, we have started to uh, develop a, a new uh, menu. Um, so what we have done is that we uh, elaborated uh, 25 uh, Asian type of uh, dishes, 25 Mediterranean, and 25 uh, um, yeah, Dutch uh, dishes, of course, uh, where, of course, it's very important with the Dutch one to have like a domestic type of, uh, of products. Uh, what is very important is, of course, that uh, the meals can be recognized um, and that they also have uh, a correct naming, uh, not something uh, fancy, because that will not work. And of course, that we uh, have to uh, adhere to the, the PVA. Uh, so based on this, we've done uh, several uh, tastings uh, in Soesterberg, uh, where we now shortlisted then uh, 17 Asian type of dishes, uh, 17 Mediterranean and 17 Dutch dishes. And then we have uh, uh, 20 vegetarian dishes standard uh, in the assortment, allowing us to have uh, a summer and a, a winter uh, menu ready. Uh, this is only based on single portions. Uh, the next step will be is that we will use from the single portions components, for example, uh, for the multi portions, and we will uh, create a new uh, snack line, uh, which is being used uh, in yeah during lunch, as an addition to, for example, bread what they will uh, will get. Any questions? Yes, yes I see. there's uh, one from Judith already. Judith, would you like to ask yourself? Uh, yes, I had a question about the slide, uh, two slides back with the huidige status. Yeah. Is it on a scale to 10 or is it on a scale to 5? Because I saw 5.1, but the numbers were very low. No, it's on a on a scale uh, five uh, five to one, but um, that was the uh, the main. Okay, thank you. I think there was also a question. I don't know if she is there from um, Frauke van S. Maybe I can just uh, share it with you. There was a question about. Uh, let me see. The temperatures we use to generate um, the, the meals. So basically what happens is, is that uh, the meals are uh, supplied to frozen, which you can also see on this, uh, this slide. You can see the, uh, the reefer uh, containers uh, right uh, top, um, which are located at the um, uh, area. These are the, the, the trailers being used to um, deliver the meals from Botman uh, to uh, the uh, exercise uh, area. Uh, so basically they are uh, in frozen condition going into uh, the oven and then we use a combination of heat 130 degrees and 40 percent uh, steam uh, to bring uh, the, the meals uh, in 60 minutes up to the uh, serving temperature of uh, 75 degrees uh, celsius um, packaging is uh, a cpet uh, uh, container uh, uh, quite faster, as we would say, uh, and uh, as mentioned, it's uh, top sealed uh, with a, uh, a seal um, which uh, is uh, non peelable uh, and the uh, typical it's a Dupont uh, uh, foil. And what helps with this foil is that once a meal is heated, it uh, uh, creates a very small, like uh, the uh, um, 
like a needle uh, holes between uh, the ceiling rim of uh, the, the container and, and the foil itself, allowing overpressure to get out of the, uh, the meal during the, uh, the cooking process. Um, and what happens then is uh, when uh, the meals are taken out, um, the, the small uh, holes will uh, close itself. And it's something you can see as well that when these meals are going into the, uh, the green containers which are being used to distribute the, uh, the meals, you can see slowly that the meal uh, sucks vacuum. Um, so instead of what you, during the cooking you see that it's uh, blowing up and uh, during the, the cooling down it's sucking vacuum in. And due to this vacuum uh, sucking as well, it uh, maintains its uh, temperature very, uh, very well. So I hope I have answered that part of the question about the packaging. Thank you, Arvid. And I think there was a question, a uh, hand, hand raised from, uh, I see Victoria, and I think previously Robert had his hand raised. Robert, do you still have a question? Uh, yes, we also had some questions from our group. Um, is it okay if I just, well, ask them instead of using the chat? Maybe that's yeah, easier. Yeah, uh, you can, uh, the chat was mainly while uh, Arvid was uh, giving the presentation, but now you yeah. can. Well. Yeah. Yeah, so currently uh, multiple different types of uh, meals are uh, being heated in the same, uh, well, combi steamer uh, oven um, for the same duration, like 60 minutes to 75 degrees. Uh, mm. But would it be logical, uh, you think, to uh, prescribe a heating advice per specific uh, meal? So to prevent uh, different kinds of meals being in the oven for the same time? Well, in fact, of course, it, it's not uh, like if you, well, you, I presume you have seen the MSK, as you are aware in the MSK, you have uh, two uh, two ovens. Um, so each oven contains one type of meal. And what we are, what we have done with our menu engineering is uh, that uh, we basically uh, produced or uh, engineered the meals that they uh, both have the same type of uh, heating requirement. So, which means that if you have uh, a selection of uh, of two types of uh, meals, uh, both will uh, heat in the same uh, type of period. And that's what we do with all the meals, because um, this is our knowledge we have out of the airline industry. Uh, you may be aware as well, in, in the airline you get uh, the choice of chicken and pasta. Uh, but there's what you will see as well is that uh, ovens are mixed. Uh, so we know uh, precisely well is uh, what combinations we can make. And also when, because we do the design of the menu, if I use a meshed product uh, like uh, uh, Hutspot, uh, for example, and um, I have uh, in the other often uh, a rice product uh, that rice and, and Hutspot uh, do heat on a different uh, time scale. Uh, and therefore, like uh, what we've done now is that we look at the combination, what we are serving with uh, the rice, for example, that we prefer to have like a thicker uh, source component with protein, uh, which uh, will then balance uh, the heating of uh, of the meal. Is yeah. So if I understand, yeah, if I understand correctly, the meals are well combined such that you can um, have two types of meals you can put in the oven uh, for the same duration. Yeah, but they go in in separate ovens. Eh? So uh, one flavor goes in one, and the other flavor goes in the other one. Yeah. It's it's not that they are mixing it. Okay. Okay. Thank and also, what you can see as well, because I know I don't know if you've seen it. Um, the bread, for example, they use that they get the bread uh, uh, frozen. Uh, yeah. So when there's uh, a meal, for example, they have which has uh, a shorter uh, heating period, then the MSK operators will use the uh, the oven. Um, well, the other one is still uh, heating uh, to use that oven, for example, to uh, defrost uh, the bread. Yeah. Okay. Um, another question we had as a group uh, was that um, obviously you use this uh, this process of uh, shock freezing, um, but before the meal is being shock freezed, it's um, well actually cooked as if you would normally cook uh, a meal, right? Yes. Uh, if yes. you look now, if you look in our kitchen, it's um, and all the staff as well. They're all people with a background of a classical restaurant. Yeah. Uh, and so. The only thing we uh, the only thing we do is, for example, is that we use the, this heat exchange uh, system, for example, uh, to keep uh, uh, quality of of the product. Uh, yeah. So instead of like using clean water again uh, to uh, cool down the product, we use the the cooking uh, liquid, which is just uh, enhancing it. Uh, but also, like uh, if I'll do on a, on a traditional uh, way, making my uh, 
Asian type of dishes. I can do my stir frying like you would do in, in your normal restaurant, but it's just uh, going into a higher scale of, uh, of producing. And do you think that there is a, a risk of uh, overcooking meals in the current uh, concept, or is that not really? Uh, um, the, the, the overcooking uh, can be done um, by um, well, what happens at the end uh, end user. Um, like uh, what we do is um, also like if you uh, would taste one of our meals, for example, we always take care that products are still al dente. Uh, and the same type of um, uh, of uh, product like uh, like pastas. Uh, but then, of course, with the test we are doing together with the military. Um, in Soesterberg, when we uh, are trialing the new meals, uh, we also see how uh, the meal will last when it goes into these containers for four hours. The four hours is a requirement. So after uh, regenerating the meals in the MSK, it goes into uh, the, the containers. You can uh, see there on the um, left uh, uh, middle part that you can see on that pallet uh, those green containers these are these isolation boxes and there the meal will uh, go in and if you look at the picture of self of the meal that's a meal after um, four hours max uh, into the isolation box yeah and okay, they still so have they still have their uh, their temperature uh, of course it will drop uh, down uh, to uh, approximately 65 uh, degrees uh, celsius uh, and of course, it, it will be hit hard, but uh, four hours is really like uh, like a maximum um, for consumption. Yeah, yeah. So if a wheel would be experienced as overcooked, that would really be um, as a result of, for example, being too long in the oven. But there's not really um, something you can prevent in the shock freezing process or in the prior no. cooking uh, process. No, the, the only thing I can do is that. Um, I already cook a product to a minimum um, and having the knowledge of what happens during the uh, regenerating uh, process uh, that it will still uh, get an additional slightly cooking step. Then we know as well that once you take out the meal, then it's uh, it's, it's ready for uh, consumption and it is uh, not overcooked or neither undercooked. Okay. Yeah, and that's the advantage as well of the scale we do uh, producing uh, because if a minimum run of these type of products uh, for me, it's about uh, between uh, 5,000 and uh, 7,500 uh, of these uh, meals. And that's something I'll do in uh, in less than uh, one hour. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Uh, there are more questions I see. Victoria, I think, was next. Yeah. Um, thank you. Um, so you mentioned that you are quite flexible with the packaging line. I was wondering, does it contain like, so you're flexible in order like having different packaging, maybe smaller ones, maybe bigger ones. So that's no problem for you to, to adapt to? No, because the disadvantage of working in the airline industry is that every airline has its own packaging. So mm. I think if you look at our, um, in our assembly, I think we have roughly about, um, between five and six hundred different types of uh, closing tools, uh, which can utilize for the different types of packaging. Okay. Um, yeah. so. <laughs> and uh, C pads material that you're using, mm -hmm. um, I know it's like from like it can be recycled, but because it's black, I heard that it's not really recyclable. Is this true, or is this just a normal black colored C pad material? Well, at the moment, what you see the trend is that me that they will use uh, and recycle it because um, even though it's uh, it's black uh, when it's and the recycling goes by um, uh, shredding uh, and bring it back into uh, reclaimed uh, material. So. Okay. okay, because I I heard that black plastic is often a problem in recycling, but maybe I'm wrong or maybe recycling plants are getting better, but um, yeah. And my last question was if you're currently looking into um, new technologies for cooking, like, yeah, something innovative maybe, or I don't know. Like, for example, more what? For, for instance, um, new heating um, technologies where you can maybe 
heat the food in a way that it doesn't lose that much vitamins or nutrients or in a more efficient or energy efficient way. Well, energy efficient, uh, we are, of course, it's a uh, diff. Well, basically, there's uh, if you look at the footprint uh, of uh, frozen meals versus uh, fresh, it's uh, it's the same. Um, maybe you are surprised about it, but uh, and you also think uh, it should be higher because of the fact that, of course, you put a lot of uh, energy uh, into it to to freeze it, but uh, a lot of um, uh, trials and tests and uh, research have shown that uh, they have the, the same type of um, of footprint. Um, if you look at uh, other ways of uh, producing, yes, of course, uh, but then uh, you move more to uh, producing like uh, sous vide, uh, which we uh, do partly with the ingredients we are using because of uh, the tenderness we uh, you like to achieve. We're also looking at uh, ambient uh, products, but um, yeah, ambient products, of course, uh, you kill you kill a product because uh, everything is uh, is dead in, in the product. And on the moment, uh, these type of autoclave way of producing is uh, is not of, of a good quality. Uh, but I mean, there, there's well technologies that doesn't involve directly heat, for instance, high pressure, where you don't have to put a lot of 120 degrees on food. That's mm -hmm. what I mean with um, the, the autoclave uh, production. Uh, but there you like you're uh, sterilizing uh, your uh, your product. And uh, on the moment, these uh, type of uh, machines are not that they can can do the volume uh, of uh, what we require uh, output wise. We, we're looking at it mm -hmm. uh, together with uh, a um, um, company related to uh, the University uh, Wageningen. Um, uh, but then again, um, these new techniques still need to be upscaled into a, a production process. Okay. Like our sister company in Canada uh, does have uh, these uh, type of products, but uh, they have a, a, a large uh, hole uh, into the production facility where they have a minimum requirement of 12 of these pipes uh, to get this high pressure done. And that takes a lot of space. Okay. Um, I saw like by chance today when I was on this website of top, that you wear as well, like a client of them. Can you say like, what are you right now collaborating with them? Uh, we're looking at uh, with uh, with them at uh, the uh, the new process of uh, of producing uh, the meals with uh, what you are highlighting. Uh, but also we are doing uh, um, looking at um, uh, meat replacing uh, products uh, with uh, with them. Okay. Interesting. Okay. Thank you, Victoria. Um, let's see, uh, because there are more questions, and if you still have some, then uh, we will get back to you. Yeah. Great. Thanks. Uh, let's go to Dania. Are you still there? Oh, she's gone. Um, Judith. I actually have a follow up question about the last topic. Uh, are you currently using then a pasteurization process to make sure that the shelf life of the food is sufficient? No, we're not doing uh, on the moment. Um, we choose the two uh, way of producing what we do on the moment. It's um, uh, either um, freeze fast, as we uh, would say it in Dutch, it's frozen. And we also produce uh, fresh meals, um, uh, which we uh, do for um, uh, KLM uh, business class on the moment. And these meals have a shelf life of uh, of eight days, of which uh, we, we guarantee uh, three days in the pipeline supply chain of uh, of KLM, for example, and uh, five days maximum that are in our warehouse. Uh, but there, like that's quite uh, complicated. What we've done is uh, we equipped our freeze uh, our cooling um, areas with uh, permafrost uh, cooling, which allows us to maintain a temperature of uh, zero uh, degrees um, any time uh, uh, during the um, uh, the process. Uh, but then, of course, then you have the uh, the supply chain towards your uh, your clients, and uh, if it moves into a truck, uh, there you cannot guarantee this uh, this zero um, uh, temperature. Neither you can um, have this with uh, your uh, your clients, so it does not uh, help uh, the the quality of the product much. Okay, thank you. That was it. Thank you, Arvid. Uh, let's see. We have uh, uh, Madhu. Yeah, so I have some questions um, in my group. 
the first one is um, have you ever thought of recycling and reusing the same package after the consumption? Um, yes, uh, of course. Uh, but then again, like if you look, for example, when the military is in uh, in Germany uh, with uh, all the uh, local uh, regulation, it's quite difficult um, to bring back uh, this uh, this material back to um, to Lelystad, uh, for example. Um, so uh, on the moment, that's that's complicated. Um, what we're looking at, for example, for the healthcare is that we have uh, invented a, a new type of packaging uh, based on uh, a combination of PMLA and uh, and plastic. Uh, which we bring back into our factory to uh, to shred and recycle back into uh, a new uh, product. Uh, but for uh, things like with the military, it's quite difficult uh, to get back these uh, type of products to uh, to Marvel for um, recycling. I think they already struggle with uh, the simple uh, plastic bottle in Germany, for example. When they have their exercises in uh, in September, it's quite difficult for them already to uh, to bring that back. Yeah, OK, and the next question is what is the usual lead time like between ordering and the delivery of the meals in the military? Well, basically what we uh, do is we guarantee for the military that we always have uh, stock uh, on uh, on hand and that we are able of uh, in case of an emergency able of upscaling within 24 hours. Uh, so basically what we have is once we know that uh, an exercise is planned, uh, we know as well how many soldiers will uh, will attend. Uh, based on that, we uh, and we know how long the period is. Uh, we will make uh, the menu. Uh, we will calculate uh, how many components they will uh, require, and then we um, um, produce this uh, this batch within four weeks uh, lead time uh, for the military. Okay, and I don't know if I missed this, but um, is the temperature of the reefer minus eighteen? Correct. Okay. So basically, 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 it is it's, uh, with these type of uh, products from us. Uh, once um, you uh, bring it back to a temperature of plus four degrees, uh, it does have a, a shelf life between, uh, uh, say, forty-eight hours and seventy-two hours. As long as you uh, keep it then on a temperature of four degrees. If you go uh, higher above the seven degrees, you're not even allowed to uh, by uh, by law. But um, um, yeah, you can still have that uh, shelf life. Yeah, OK, and just one last question. Um, are there any common complaints that you receive about the meals? Well, of course, we um, receive complaints that uh, meals are maybe not um, high on uh, on taste and, uh, and flavor, but that's, of course, due to the guidelines we receive from the dietitians from um, uh, the military, from defense. Um, also, of course, what they are saying is we have uh, sufficient condiments uh, available for the soldiers uh, to add to the meals. Um, uh, to be very honest, this uh, when we started with these meals, they were uh, supplied to the military based on our brand Chef Martin. And uh, especially in 2019, when I was there uh, with uh, seeing how the exercise uh, went, um, we already is uh, marked with uh, the fact, hey, are you Chef Martin? So I think also like if you do a, an approved branding, uh, but also look at um, improving your meals more to what is currently available in the supermarkets, um, it will help to uh, increase um, the appreciation of the meals. Um, I think everybody knows that uh, uh, when you eat, uh, it's an emotion. Uh, when a, a meal um, doesn't look uh, very appetizing, uh, you say, okay, I'm not, uh, I'm not going to eat it. Um, so that's why what we like doing on the moment with this new uh, development. And I have heard that you had a, a tasting of the, the meals which we uh, already supply since uh, 2009. I think if we would do a new exercise with you with these new meals, you could see that we uh, made uh, a lot of improvement. But this improvement was finally made by input of the soldiers as well, which is quite important because they are the end user. You can design it to, the, uh, of course, meals from behind the desk. Somebody somewhere, for example, in Soesterberg or maybe in the Hague in the uh, in the office. But um, if you get the end users uh, involved in it, uh, the stakeholders, then uh, it will help with uh, improving the product. Yeah, okay. thank, thank you. you. Um, let's move to Dania. Dania, is your mic uh, mic working now? Yes. Can you hear me? Great. Yes, we can. Yeah. 
Hello. Um, yeah, I, I had the same question as uh, uh, the girl before uh, about the packaging return. So uh, you said that it's difficult for, for the army to return the packaging, but do you know the reason why is it difficult to return the packaging since you can shredder it? Well, it's volume, of course, how to bring it back. Um, <clears throat> like, um, yeah, well, there's still like food particles in there. So you're also talking about uh, a piece of health safety. Uh, how um, how are you going to store uh, these uh, uh, this garbage? Um, are you able of um, of pressing it? Well, when you start to press it together, of course, there's still uh, leftover particles of the food in there, so it's it's quite polluted. Um, the only way you can do uh, recycling of a product, uh, for example, the project we are doing on the moment for the hospitals, what we do there is we uh, ask the hospitals to uh, to wash the product, so to tackle first the first part of uh, hygiene. And then the second part will once again be washed at, uh, at our plant uh, to sanitize them. And once they are very clean, then it's um, easy to shred it and to uh, to make a new product of it. Oh, then in the plant there is a facility to wash it? Then. Yes. Oh, then it's possible for the army to just give it to you, even if it's polluted, but then you can wash it and recycle it. Yeah, but they will have to do the first stage, of course, eh? because uh, imagine that um, uh, a dirty seed bed uh, uh, is somewhere in an area which is like uh, above 25 degrees, flies, uh, everything. Uh, there, of course, you need to have a proper facility to uh, to pack it. Uh, but then if you're already on that location, for example, uh, will start to, to press it, you need to be sure that there it's already clean. So if it's compacted there already, then you have, of course, a problem with uh, pollution. And what would you call as the first step for washing it, just to remove the the, the food uh, remaining? In the well, what I what I need to be uh, removed is uh, food and uh, and as much uh, dirt as possible. Uh, actually, you you really need to see the the black uh, container mm -hmm. again. And also, of course, if you can see it, the picture as well of the presentation, uh, there's of course on the seal rim there's a lot of uh, plastic, uh, which of course will uh, can be partly recycled, but then. Uh, you will not get a, a, a complete uh, well product back. So what we're testing on the moment first, but then again, uh, the question will be, um, is somebody willing to do it? Is that we um, are using a new CPAT container for the military uh, with a new cycle, which does have a PP coating on the inside, uh, or a CPAT coating, sorry, and a carton uh, outer side. It looks like uh, your milk pack, your Tetra pack. There, for example, what you could do is that you can peel the, the black uh, from the carton, separate the carton and return the uh, the seabed. But then again, I know sometimes the soldiers are not very busy. You can't ask your soldier after eating a uh, tear party, uh, separate the carton and um, uh, separate the, uh, the seabed. So it, it's still it's still quite complicated. It's, 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 it's a difficult subject. I think that's the challenge then. Okay. Yeah, what, we, what we've seen as well, uh, like... Um, um, what is very important that you realize uh, um, also when um, they are um, heating these uh, these meals. I don't know if you see this slide. Yeah, I can see. Look at the way they are um, handling our uh, our sea pads. Yeah, they uh, they don't uh, take them like if if you look at cabin crew on the airline, they they take them out of the oven and put them on the tray. Uh, due to the pressure they have, they uh, just uh, yeah throw it uh, from. Uh, the rack into these uh, these containers. Uh, yeah. So what you design as packaging needs to uh, work in the environment, and that's the advantage of using um, a seapod container with um, uh, non-peelable uh, foil. Yeah. Of course, this is yeah. Sorry to say, uh, of Dutch hufte proof. Yeah, yeah. Because actually, the the sealing of of the of the black box is is also very uh, difficult to remove when they are going to open the box. Uh, as, a, as we experienced on that day, um, it was really difficult to open. So sometimes they need to, to you know, uh, open it with the fork or with the knife because it's really hard to open with the hand. Yeah, but that's also because of uh, what they are doing this way. And also look at the size of this uh, this gentleman. If he uh, takes out the meals on the uh, the top uh, shelf, like what happens with, uh, with CPET, when CPET is uh, heated, it gets uh, uh, soft. Yeah. Yeah, if you would uh, hold uh, the corners, you can uh, wiggle it around. But you mentioned before that you're working to change the the packaging, right? Now it will be a different one, or it's still the same. 
the black well, one. The, the new the new menu uh, we designed um, uh, will be in a combination of carton and uh, and seabed coating, uh, but still like with heating uh, the material gets uh, soft. Mm -hmm. So therefore, because of people are uh, taking uh, things out uh, above their shoulder, it's for health and safety also important. Uh, that of course uh, the seal is uh, very well connected to the uh, the packaging. And I think if you do some more uh, scrolling as well, you can see if sometimes if they heat it uh, too long because they think it's not hot. If it goes uh, very long, then sometimes uh, the seal uh, will get loose from the container as well. Um, so if you then uh, take something out out of uh, an oven with a core temperature of 70 plus degrees, yeah, yeah food safety or health safety wise, uh, you have possibility of burns. And also like any chef uh, in, in a kitchen working, uh, would never have his uh, sleeves uh, rolled up. Uh, these uh, gentlemen, they they do it. So their arms are very uh, sensitive for for burning, for example. So you need to take that into in account as well. Yeah. Okay. And next question. Also, you said that you, you did. Oh yeah. So, um, so uh, we still have ten minutes, and I see there are questions also from other students. So oh, shall right. we keep yours uh, for the end if yes. there's time? Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Um, one question that was in the chat, uh, why is the packaging of MSK a single portion uh, not compartmentalized? It is. Uh, yes. We have uh, two uh, two versions. Uh, we have the one which is on the moment on the slide uh, visible as well, uh, where you have just uh, one single component, but we also have with uh, uh, two compartments. Um, so, uh, for example, if we have uh, a meatball with uh, with sauce and uh, and a mesh product, uh, we then sometimes use uh, indeed uh, the two compartment. Uh, but it's always you always have to play around with it because um, you also have to adhere, of course, to um, uh, the the weight requirements based on the PVA. And sometimes uh, things will not fit in a two compartment where you rather use the two compartment, and then you have to choose for a, a single compartment. Uh, but there what we do sometimes is that we use, for example, the, the starch component like uh, mashed potatoes as, as a barrier between vegetables and a sauce content. You are smart then in the way you assemble the meal so you don't get the mixture. And sometimes like with Asian type of meals as well, if you have like a curry with rice and vegetables, mm -hmm. um, you know as well that people like to uh, take the spoon and uh, start to mix it and eat it together. So then uh, it's it's easier to have a single compartment than a, than a double compartment. Okay, so I guess it depends on the... Depends on the meal. On the meal, yeah. yeah. And uh, can you also produce packaging with more than two compartments? Yeah, I think, Kelly, um, it was just... Yeah, but <clears throat> you have to be careful, of course, with all these uh, um, packaging, of course, they're uh, always made a, a bit conical because uh, conical also means that they are easy to, uh, uh, to lose out of the production mold. And secondly, of course, uh, it takes uh, um, less volume uh, because they are stacked. Um, so once you are making more compartments in there, uh, it uh, you will lose uh, space in your uh, packaging. Okay. Um, we still have uh, six more minutes. Arvid, uh, are you okay with uh, taking up? I th think there are three more questions. Yeah, no worries. So let's see how far we can get. Uh, Hannah. Yeah, uh, so we were looking into using reusable packaging. So uh, I was wondering, like, if you're also looking at other sustainable packaging options, like maybe use silicones and reuse that or bamboo or something like that. Yeah, silicones, uh, it's um, something with silicon has um, a discussion point about uh, cancer related. So we also have been looking at using uh, a silicon coating in, in the packaging, but uh, with the heating process, it does have some negative side effects, so you need to be very careful with it. Uh, bamboo, um, we have done tests with it, but uh, we noted there that um, the product will cool down very uh, fast in the, the moment we put it in the isolation box and it goes into the field. Okay. Uh, somehow, um, CPET is magic, uh, also with the top seal to, uh, to maintain its, uh, its temperature. Oh, okay. Uh, so that's you really need to look at because items are being stacked and that's also what we know out of the airline industry, for example. 
if you put them all stacked together on top of each other, they um, they keep their warmth uh, very well. They um, transport their warmth to each other, uh, packaging wise then. Um, so uh, yeah, the temperature stays uh, very good in the operational process. Yeah, so, and that's easier when uh, when the material is thinner. Yeah, well, th thickness, thinness doesn't make that much. If you stack it together, it, it's well. And bamboo doesn't somehow uh, transport uh, heat in between. Uh, okay. if, so if you two um, uh, bamboo items stack to each other, there's not a very good uh, interaction between them with uh, transferring heat. Okay, yeah, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Frauke. Uh, first of all, thank you for uh, giving an answer to my question from the email. Okay. And I also have a question about the taste. Uh, like you said, you had some complaints about the taste of the meals. And you also said that there are some guidelines from the Ministry of Defense that makes it difficult for you to make the meal more tasty. Uh, so my question is, what are the most important guidelines uh, that, make, that limit you to make a tasty meal? Well, tasty, of course, uh, it's it's the salt contents of uh, of the meal. Uh, it also relates to to fat. For example, what we've done now uh, with uh, the military for the new line of meals that we said all our um, um, Asian style of dishes uh, we cook authentic. Yeah, as Marvel, we are well known uh, for authentic cooking because uh, we produce um, meals for Qatar Airways, for Thai Airways. Uh, Garuda Indonesia. So there we say, okay, fine. If you get a, um, uh, an authentic um, uh, Thai dish, then it will be authentic spicy. Um, and it will have also its uh, uh, same amount of fat uh, and uh, salt. And what we do then is that we add, uh, for example, a pasta dish opposite, uh, which will be then in the guidelines of, uh, of the ministry regarding uh, the fat content and um, uh, the salt content. And there, of course, uh, they are following uh, the guidelines um, uh, according to what is uh, uh, common in uh, in the Netherlands uh, with the Bureau of Fooding. Uh, and there you know as well that I think if you would follow these uh, guidelines yourself, then you say as well, I don't like the meal, I like to have more salt. Yeah, yeah, that's clear. And funny, then... comparison, funny comparison I can tell you is that if you look, for example, at healthcare, uh, we do healthcare in Germany and we do healthcare in uh, in the Netherlands. If I do uh, my weekly tasting of meals we produce, I first have to taste the Dutch meals before I do the uh, the German meals because in Germany they are allowed to cook much higher taste, more much more salt they are allowed to use in healthcare meals than, for example, in the Netherlands. In the Netherlands, about 50% less they are allowed to use than, for example, in Germany. So that's quite surprising. So that's similarly now to the guidelines which are in uh, in the Netherlands regarding to um, uh, yeah to uh, to flavor, but that's more like the salt contents. Of course, I could do a lot with flavor regarding uh, spices, etc. That's what we do. Uh, but to say that a meal is not very tasty is more related to salt, for example. Okay. Um, thank you very much. That's clear. Okay. Thank you. And then we have uh, Gekke. Hi. Thank you. Uh, thanks for the presentation. Um, I really like the fact that you mentioned you have a two compartment box sometimes. Um, so then I wonder, do you also use different preparation methods and freezing methods per specific compartment to improve its quality? Well, we can only do it, of course, with uh, um, the cooking of the different ingredients. Uh, but at the end, when they go into the packaging, they, they get that together. And of course, then there's one way in, into the freezer. Uh, there's, of course, it's very difficult to do uh, a different type of freezing. And uh, with all honesty, uh, changing the freezing doesn't affect the quality of the product. It's it's vital that both products are going through the same uh, period of time and through the same uh, temperature to uh, to get the right product to uh, to be able of uh, regenerating. Yeah. Okay. And I think um, all the teams that are working on this challenge right now will come up with um, innovative technologies, um, which would definitely influence also your way of preparing foods. So I wondered, is Marfo able or willing um, 
to to listen to really new ideas that that can actually change your whole way of processing or is that not possible yes we always are we're like an innovating uh, dutch company so if there's any um, maybe it's good to uh, have uh, have a possibility of uh, looking at Fleury uh, Michon, our mother company, and uh, see what they are doing at the moment. Um, they are doing a lot of uh, food production in retail. Um, they are le- even looking now at uh, using glass casseroles uh, to uh, to have a meal heated in. Uh, they are using um, for retail at the moment. Um, you know, you have, if you get your French typical French cheese, it's in a, in a wooden uh, box. Uh, they designed uh, these round boxes, but also rectangular boxes. They put a piece of uh, grease paper in there and then assemble a meal in there. So we do a lot of innovation in, in products. Um, so we're always open of, uh, of finding new ways of, uh, of new ways of packaging, new ways of uh, producing. OK, thanks. But no problem at all. Then we will keep on thinking outside of the box and maybe you will one time receive an email with an innovative idea and I hope you are willing to answer it. Thanks. Yeah, as, like as mentioned uh, to uh, Dimitra as well, it's like we do a lot of uh, these challenges with um, um, universities um, also within the airline uh, to uh, design a, a new airline concept because uh, also there you can see that uh, there are changes. Um, you see it in the different types of aircraft, uh, the way they're producing aircraft, it's also they're looking at another way of type of surface. So uh, yes, um, with all means, that if you have a great idea, we can always have a look at it and we're open for it. Thanks. Yeah, and um, I'm, uh, we're going to send you also an invite for the final uh, presentation. So mm-hmm. if you are uh, able to join, it will be great. Um, is there any last question? Dania, I think I didn't let you complete all your questions um we're already at two o'clock so if people need to leave uh, of course our if you also need to leave um then we can uh, wrap it up yeah if we have two other minutes and then i need to join another call yeah then uh, I, think, oh, I think just from my side one important um, uh, thing is don't underestimate um, uh, frozen uh, the, the frozen production um, it's 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 a very good way of producing high quality meals, and I can tell you that if um, if you do a tasting with us, a blind tasting between a frozen meal and a fresh produced meal, you won't see any difference. I think where you really need to look at is is finding a more um, yeah sorry that I say it hoofed proof packaging uh, to suit this uh, this process with uh, with the military uh, because that's very important. Uh, but you can see that uh, food safety wise, all these things um, frozen is, is is a very good solution. Okay. Thank you. Good, t- good, uh, good that you said so. Uh, it's good for the students to take that into account. Um, okay, there's, uh, I think you need to go actually, right? So um, everyone, we're already past time. I see. But Dimitra, if there are any more questions, if maybe you can centralize them um, and put them in an email uh, to me. Um, I've been abroad uh, the last week, so it was difficult for me. And I had to go into, um, I was in the orange area, so I had to go in my mandatory um, quarantine uh, as well. I'll, I'll be yeah, back at the right. office next uh, next week. So if uh, there's any other questions popping up, uh, if we can organize uh, a central email to be sent, then I'm, I'm willing to answer them without any problem. Yeah. Um, okay, then uh, we will communicate this to the students and uh, maybe it's good if uh, we get the questions until a specific date and then send them to you. Yeah. So I'm going to contact the coordinator to see how we're going to work this out. Okay. Okay, great. Uh, I see Marche has your hand up, but I'm not sure if... Because uh, uh, I think we should let uh, Arvin leave for his next call. Uh, so, good questions now. I'm going to stop the recording and thank you so much.